Hi, this is the Art Process 2 and today I'll be covering a bit of my ideas and thought process behind um, composition and storytelling. So, can you notice a storytelling aspect on this artwork? What about this one? In this video I will explore the thought behind making these artworks and how I try to communicate a story using composition and other visual elements in general all right everything starts with an idea and you can execute it in many different ways so today's examples are two different artworks with different executions and ideas just to illustrate how complex they can be and how the approach is not always the same and this topic is so huge it's really complex and um has a lot to it and it's extremely interesting because it involves human perceptions and psychology and even mathematics and cultural aspects of the viewer I mean it's really really complex it's really interesting and in the end it's about human perception this one is from an upcoming video and the context of this particular video is a society trying to survive a Lovecraftian apocalypse. Tons of weird creatures are roaming the streets and flying over the skies. And the idea for this scene is to make something empty, like if people had to leave this area in a hurry. There's a creature roaming by, and in the story of this video, the creature does not have any weak points. It's something you should just run from since bullets are useless against it. That's the base idea for the sketch I have underneath the line art I'm working on. An abandoned place where people used to cook, sleep and do other survival things. And um, from this concept alone I could think about examples of visual things that describes an empty place left as it is. So I thought about people leaving personal objects, clothing, bags, uh, food, you know, that sort of thing. Since this artwork is supposed to be part of a narrative video with other immersive aspects to it, like a soundtrack, editing and other artworks, I'm not really 100% relying on the art itself. So I can let go some things and not be that critical about it. Basically, it's hard to miss the point when you have soundtracks with a narration explaining something about this creature in an immersive way, you know? There's a whole context before this particular image appears. So it's, it's different from this second example here. This one was made purely as an illustration and I had to communicate everything using the image, only the image. Besides that, the execution was different since it was a painting and realistic stuff tend to drag a bit more tension and I had to, the chance to play around with colors and a whole different context to the scene but I will focus on this one later on so for now let's get back to the faceless creature composition is a topic of constant study and it's something that has been used since the beginning of art basically like the, the old masters of art they all used composition techniques on their paintings basically there are regions and certain rules I can follow to create a, a pleasing image more than that I can use that knowledge to point out specific things and hopefully dictates the movement of your eyes in other words I can tell a story using composition this is a very hard thing to do since this is not a perfect science in my opinion. For instance, here's something to think about. We are used to read things from left to right, which is not the case in other cultures with different languages. So that aspect of our culture can change the order we see things and how we perceive artworks and compositions. With that said, let's dive into the specifics about uh, the thought process of this particular painting. As I mentioned earlier, I have to get used to the feeling 
of letting things go and not having a super good artwork because in this case there are a bunch of things that could be improved and um, composition wise it's not the best there are always something to work on for example there are some perspective mistakes and other cringe things I can notice right now but it's fine because it's based on a, a video that has a whole context to it the composition could be better if I thought a bit more about the placement of specific elements and I feel there's a bit of confusion on this because my eyes cannot decide what to focus on on a particular order and while I was writing the script for this video I felt the urge to fix it somehow so here's how I fix it basically I tried to fix a few things that felt misplaced I kept flipping the canvas around and adding new branches and trees trying to make something to follow the movement of the main character but my intention was that the viewer should not sp spot that guy right away to help on the narrative of the situation which is this uh, horrible creature that appears out of nowhere and people just have to leave everything behind when people notice this creature roaming around even from a far distance they have to leave ASAP and find another place to hide and I wanted the viewer to be caught off guard by this creature while listening to a description of it once the, the video is done but I don't think I could achieve this very specific design choice without the whole context of a video you know because this is very specific right um, if you see this artwork without any context without me saying things about it you might think about something else right but anyways those new trees on the background really helps to add more atmosphere and depth to the scene and trees are usually straight lines in our perception but when we have an angle to it they tend to guide our eyes to something that guidance with shapes is also happens with a couple pointy uh, designs here and there like the tent and specific branches pointing out towards the faceless creature I also made small changes on the camping area with a better warm light but still a couple things would remain a bit off generally speaking there is a tree near the tent that has a big contrast against the foggy background and that alone can be a magnet to our eyes and by default you would notice the creature as well since it's close to that focus basically another explanation can be the fact that the creature's shape is different from the trees and we can quickly notice that pattern breaking and noticing something different in there which is a nice composition idea so like imagine straight trees in a forest and then an angular shape in the middle or nearby all those straight lines um, it's a break of, of of a composition made by a different shape so our eyes also tend to notice different shapes and there are some shapes that we are really familiar with for example the shape of a hand the shape of a, of a face of a, a body a silhouette from afar you know so you can easily find around the internet those fake um, cryptid monster pictures you know like from taken from afar that looks like a, a humanoid creature you know we can see that on rocks there there's even a NASA picture of Mars of a rock like a mountain formation that looks like a face because the shapes of the shadows just straight up look like a face and we have this this thing carved in our perception I use that very same concept for another artwork from another up upcoming video which I, I painted live and I use the pattern of the trees all over their place and the creature behind it to break this pattern and be noticeable of course there are m many other things in game here but that was one of my main ideas for the composition my goal was too specific for this composition and I think that's why it was not easy to execute so right now you're seeing the time-lapse of my fixing process and um, 
this is basically how it is right now after some fixing and uh, yeah I tried to apply it, everything I was talking about previously and I think it looks way better way more, more eye-catching and yeah generally better and speaking about letting things go and be happy with a non-perfect artwork that brings me to the second example the second artwork I made which has some other composition aspects to it that are a bit deeper than just shapes it has some psychology and meaning behind objects as well the composition on this one had a interesting things going on which is about meanings um, the composition itself it's pretty simple there's a bright character on a spot that is known to catch your attention the same goes to the other character on the opposite end of the composition but he's not that bright and he's not in the same um, level of the bright character so it tends to create some sort of level of importance let's say in the middle there's something catching your attention as well this is a description I tried to make without using anything about the meanings of the things I painted when I was painting this I thought about meaning not just the situation itself so on the previous artwork I didn't thought about meanings it was more about an empty place because of a creepy creature you know and people had to flee this particular one had meanings involved because it's it's an illustration and um, the message was a bit complex but you know I had to use meanings as a focus for my overall composition so you can use other social and cultural things into the composition depending on on your goal I met a guy that might be taking a shit and has no arms like the situation alone can be dreadful to think about but there's a, a Buddhist monk offering toilet paper to him he's smiling and full of light making a contrast on this dark bathroom there's also a hint of a spectral arm growing out of the armless guy which you can read as if he got enlightened or you can understand this painting in a totally different way which is awesome you might think this is a purely rhetorical situation and nothing literal is the meaning you can ignore the literal aspect of the artwork and say hmm I think this is about finding the light when you are deep in shadows in the bottom of a pit there's also a light to follow or something along those lines you know there are plenty of, of different ways to to make something out of this artwork there's also the meaning of a monk which can only make sense if you know what a monk is and what it represents so there's another example of something meaningful in the painting this is another example on how to think about storytelling and compositions to help out the narrative now take a look at this section here if that magic hand was a real hand it would be hard to tell which hand is giving the toilet paper and which hand is receiving it right that's a problem about n not nailing the readability of an artwork with specific goals it's usually something that can work both ways this image right here an open hand with palms facing up just like that might be seen as a giving hand and the other hand should look like the receiving one but you can argue the opposite as well sometimes a, a palm facing up with an object nearby might looks like if the character is giving something it depends on how you do your own interpretation so there are meanings in the way I used the hands basically so it's 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 a, it's on a deeper level than just a composition of things and shapes you know color also plays a big role but in my opinion it's mostly used as a mood selector different colors can make you feel something else and it's a badass topic to study and master Personally, I don't think I'm that good with colors, so that's why I try to compensate with other things. If you see this artwork on a black and white footer, the values are nice, and probably any color could work. 
and I think they won't change the feeling of the painting that much since the situation is very specific and I work with very specific meanings but you know when it comes to this artwork here the faceless one a coat color suits better because it gives an eerie feeling and it fits the fog on the background you know the whole situation screams for something that is not bright and colorful or warm because those words and colors related to those words tend to give you a different feeling to sum it up it feels like a really chaotic process sometimes especially when it's just a painting without any narrations and context behind it when it's a video we have more tools to use and create a solid immersive experience not having to rely purely on illustrations so yeah there's a lot to cover and I gave uh, specific examples based on very few artworks so it's easier to follow the thought behind it composition is mostly about human perception and storytelling than just a pretty painting of course all those things can be tied together to create an ultimate experience and I'm trying to share the things I know about art and perception with you guys because you know I love that stuff I have a lot to learn and it's a never-ending struggle especially because the more I study the more questions I'm asking so you know there's colors there are meanings there are different ways people can interact with the artwork there's composition there's everything in place and it's a very hard craft to master so yeah I'm I'm constantly struggling to have better skills from time to time so yeah I hope that this video was not that chaotic I hope you guys could you know understand a bit of the process behind it and um, basically in the end it's hard to control reactions once the artwork is out there you can make your own assumptions to it especially when it's just a painting as I stated many times here and this is amazing I have personal paintings that I had like extremely different opinions about them and this is really fun and interesting how humans can create meanings on things but anyways yeah this video is long enough and I should just stop talking because I'm off the script here so yeah See you on the next one.